All right, considered by many economists to be the bloodline of the economy, the U.S. trucking industry is currently suffering from a massive shortage of truck drivers with over 30,000 positions unfilled. Joining me now is former Governor Bill Graves, CEO and President of the American Trucking Association and former Governor of Kansas. He's in D.C. right now. Thank you for joining us, Governor. Sure, Sandra. Good morning. So here we are at an economy where you know, Main Street still says they don't feel good about the recovery. Every day people say that they're worried about losing their jobs, even if they have one. Many are still looking for a job. And here you're saying help is wanted in the trucking industry. Yeah, it's, it's a, uh, it, is, uh, it doesn't make sense, I guess, on its face. But when you start to peel back the layers and you appreciate, one, how challenging the industry is. It's a, it's a tough job, uh, hard work, uh, long hours for a lot of the over-the-road drivers being away from home. Uh, number two, there are some increased federal requirements on safety conditions for drivers, and therefore uh, carriers have to be more selective about who they do hire. Um, there's competition as the economy recovers in some other, you know, parts, segments of the, uh, of the economy, especially mm. in construction. So it's just, it's a, a combination of a number of factors that just make finding good drivers to put behind the wheel very difficult. Now, I have to tell you that I, I'm a, a, an economist at heart, and I believe that supply uh, and demand always drive these markets. And when I see that there's a shortage of, you know, sh shortage of drivers in the trucking market, I have to think that uh, maybe that the supply is not there. Maybe the prices aren't good enough. Uh, maybe the job isn't meeting expectations of somebody looking for work. I mean, what's driving the shortage? Why are people looking for work, but they're not willing to do this job? Well, again, I, I think, you know, some of it just the nature of the job. I mean, it is hard work. Uh, it, it, it means being away from home, away from family. Um, I think you're going to see, uh, you know, pressure on wages uh, going forward. There's a myriad of different uh, 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 pay models for the trucking industry, but keep in mind to the extent that uh, that, that pressure does come to bear and, and has to be met in order to put drivers behind the wheel, that ultimately gets passed through to consumers in the products that, they're, that are on the back of those trucks. All right, well, you've got a plan to do something about this. What are you going to do what? to fill these positions? Well, there's a number of things going on right now. Uh, first of all, we have a, an abundance of individuals in the U.S. military who have a lot of experience moving uh, freight, moving, moving things. Uh, we're trying to make sure we can somehow align the training and, and, the, and the credentialing that you receive as a member of the military with what's required for a CDL by the Department of Transportation. We're not there yet, but it's something everybody knows needs to happen, and it's, it's what we need to do the right thing for our vets. Number two, there's a real uh, uh, effort underway with both for-profit and non-for-profit truck driving training schools. Uh, they've sort of been an underappreciated element of, of, of the educational process in this country, and all of a sudden there's a great demand for the services they provide. So I think you're a, a lot of emphasis placed there. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, carriers themselves run their own truck driver training schools and recruitment programs, and the large uh, professionally run uh, uh, sought-after jobs that those mm -hmm. carriers offer, they're going to take a, a, a big role in, in filling this void as well. As I understand it, you believe that there's been some unfair criticism of your industry, that, that there's been reports that, uh, you know, driving a truck is not safe. Oh, well, I mean, I think when you, you take into account that every day on the nation's highways, there's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of one and a half million to two million, you know, freight hauling vehicles on the road every day, there isn't any doubt we, we suffer and, 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 and obviously we regret any time there's an accident that, that, that mm -hmm. gains public attention. Uh, but for the most part, we have some incredibly safe professionals logging millions of miles every year, making sure products get delivered that sustains the quality of life in this country. All right, so, Governor, you've got a few seconds left here. Uh, for somebody who may be sitting at home listening and is looking for a job, pitch them. Why should they become a truck driver? Hey, well, first of all, because on average you're going to make somewhere perhaps in the neighborhood of $50,000 a year within a few years of being in the industry. Most of these companies offer very fine benefit packages. Quite frankly, for a lot of people, it's an opportunity to see America, to move around the country and enjoy uh, this great nation of ours. And quite frankly, it's a job that can't be outsourced. In fact, our industry is growing, tonnage is growing, and the demand for trucking will grow, and therefore there's a lot of security in jobs within our industry. All right. Great stuff. Uh, thank Thank you so much for joining us. Former Governor Bill Graves, uh, you know, a really interesting angle to the story, and there are jobs that are out there, 30,000 of them in the trucking industry. Thank you.